Hey guys, if you're watching this video, then you're either a student thinking of pursuing computer science at the University of Houston, or you're already a student who's enrolled in the program. I'll essentially be making a series of YouTube videos to help explain all the different CS classes in the degree plan and give you the advice that I wish someone had given me when I started off here. Since this is the first video, I'll be going over the very first computer science class in the degree plan, COSC 1306, Computer Science and Programming. Before we get started, I just wanted to show you that there are a few great resources out there for choosing which professor to take a course with. The first and most to use is Rate My Professors. This website shows you all the reviews that students have left regarding certain professors and the courses that they teach. It's a really good resource and you should definitely use it when checking out which professor to take for your classes. The second great resource I wanted to show you guys is CougarGrades.io. This website is definitely a lifesaver. It shows you the exact distribution of grades that professors have given their students in each semester for each course they've taught. You can search by professor and also by course. I would say that you should search by course because you already know what course you're going to take. So, for example, if you wanted to look up data structures, you can look that up and see all the different professors who have taught the course and all the grades that they've given their students. All right, so back to talking about 1306. So this class is currently taught by three professors, Professor Hilford, Professor Shaw, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this one. We'll just go ahead and say Professor Dan. When I took this class two years ago, I took it with Professor Hilford. I'll just go ahead and say that this is by far one of the easiest classes I've taken at U of H. This class is actually supposed to be pretty easy. It's an introductory class to teach you about the basics of programming. And thankfully, it's also taught in Python, which is considered one of the easiest programming languages. All right, so here we'll go ahead and take a more in-depth look at Professor Hilford's class, for example. She requires all of her students to enroll in something called Zybooks. Uh, it costs about $70, and it's basically an online platform that teaches you certain topics, grades your coursework, and reports the results to your professors so that they can give you a grade for your work. One thing I should mention is that if you're taking Hilford's class, uh, then almost all the work you do for her class will be on Zybooks. Just pay close attention to all the activities you do in Zybooks and be sure to revise the concepts before exams. One thing to note is that the assignments in this class are very similar to the activities and labs done on Zybooks. And as for the exams, they're all on Blackboard and you should do pretty well if you understand what's taught in Zybooks. Um, Again, this was an overview of Hilford's class because, you know, that's who I took it with and that's what I can show you. You can see that I was in this class in, uh, like two years ago, August 11th, 2018. Again, you know, this class shouldn't be too difficult no matter the professor you're taking it with since it's an introductory class. So to summarize this class, it's not very difficult. It should be relatively easy to make an A. I'd say that you should expect to spend anywhere between 5 to 10 hours per week outside of class studying and working on assignments. Since this class focuses on the absolute basics of Python, you learn things from basic hardware and software concepts to creating variables, loops, and functions to file manipulation. These fundamentals are necessary for all your other CS classes taught at UH. If you struggle in this class, then you'll probably find the other classes after this one to be more difficult. But for those of you who may struggle, I wouldn't worry too much. There are tons of great resources online. Um, check out Geeks for Geeks, Abdul Bari on YouTube, Stack Overflow, and there are a ton of other resources on campus. You know, I'd say to attend office hours for your TAs and your professor. They'll be more likely to help you if you actually show up in person rather than emailing them. And professors who see that you're actually trying will probably be more likely to give you that extra bump at the end of the semester if you need it. Another big thing that I want to touch on is that it's 100% necessary to have a group of friends or classmates who are willing to put in the time and study with you. Not only is this going to result in better motivation to study, but you'll have a group of people to go to if you actually need help. One great way to do this is by joining Cougar CS. It's basically UH's computer science club, and there are tons of cool people in it who are willing to study with you and tutor you if you need it. You can learn more about them here at their website. Now, one last thing that I want to touch on is that for these different classes, you'll probably be required to use different programming languages. So for example, 1306, you'll be using Python. 1430, you'll be using C++ and Java. 2430, you'll probably be using C++ or Java. And for the rest of these, it really just matters on the class that you're taking and the professor you're taking it with. One example is that for software engineering and software design, you'll be required to use JavaScript, CSS, HTML, just because you're building a website. And you know those are the projects that are required for these two classes here. And it really just depends for the other classes. 
I should also bring up that right now is probably the best time to get started with projects and studying leak code. The earlier the better. Companies definitely want to see your projects so that they can see your experience with programming, and they also want to test your problem solving skills through leak code type questions. So definitely look into those things if you haven't already. That just about sums it up for this video. Please let me know if you have any suggestions for other videos or if you think I forgot to mention something. Since it's my first video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and a comment. See you guys next time.